point charge of 12 nanocoulombs is located at the origin, along with a few buddies. It's got four uniform line charges located in the x equals zero plane, and they have some values, and they are located at some coordinates. So I have taken the liberty to draw out our situation that has been laying before us. You got your 12 nanocoulomb charge here. You got four line charges and you have one point charge and we want to know what the electric flux density is at this point. Okay. First, realize that we are dealing with symmetric line charges. And in symmetry, they're symmetric by the negative three, y equals negative three line. Do you see that? Because these two are both one unit away from this point, and they are both uh, negative 50 nanocoulomb charges. And these these two red lines are two nano or two units away, and they're the same um, coulomb per meter value. They're both 80 coulomb nanocoulombs per meter, so they're the same value of line charge. So because of that, we know that in the y direction, we will have canceling. Um, values because this line will cancel that line and this blue line will cancel the other blue line so we know the y direction is not a got nothing in the y direction right z direction well it's a, an infinite line charge so um whenever you're dealing with an infinite line charge and you're trying to find the the electric field or the electric flux value you know that um it's going to cancel like um all the z components will be canceled by um, each other. Like for example, like these two z components would cancel, and this would be from I don't know some point over here and some point over here. Um, so we have no z value due to these line charges. Now the only thing left is the x. Well, we're on the x equals zero plane, and um, these line charges don't even really. Um, they would be pretty much point charges if you looked at them in the x space. So they're not going to do anything in that aspect either. Um, x is like, the x axis is like not even really relevant in this uh, problem because we're just all in one yz plane here. And please don't confuse, this is a z axis, not x. Um, okay, so now that we know that these line charges are relevant to this point here, we can find the value of this 12 nanocoulomb charge onto this point charge here. And I'm looking for my paper for the numbers. So let's just evaluate that. Oh, whoops. Where'd I go? Okay, I'm here. Um, D is gonna be equal to the value of our charge times the um, the distance between them. So this is this is negative three, and this is two units of z. So we have negative three a y plus two a z over. Four pi times the uh, just this distance r. Well, it's it's going to be actually. Let me do it like this. I'll I'll do. Twelve nanocoulombs like that, and then we're going to multiply it by its unit vector, which is going to be you know r over value and then this is going to be 4 pi r. So now we'll fill all this in. So um, d is equal to 12 nanocoulombs. So this is going to be negative 3y plus 2az. No, no x component like we were talking about. And then this will be 4 pi times r. Oh, excuse me. This is r squared. Um, so r squared is going to be 3 squared plus 2 squared squared and this is going to be 
the root of 3 squared plus 2 squared. So that gives us a, you can take this value and just take it to the 3 halves instead. Or just do the math, whatever, don't really matter. This is all just a math problem now. And you will result in negative 6.11 ay. Oh, wait. This is your final answer. And it looks about right because you'd expect it to have um, a little bit more y direction, right? I guess you wouldn't really expect that. It's kind of hard to tell, but just believe it to be true, I guess. Um, so the next one. Part B, how much electric fuss causes the y equals 3 plane in what direction? Okay, well, we know that these these fluxes already cancel each other, right? At this, at this plane, this is how we discovered um, that we didn't need to use any math for these line charges in the first problem. So we know that we're only dealing with this point charge again. So basically the question is, how much flux does this point charge pump through the negative three plane? So let's draw that out again. Here's our grid. Here's our point charge again. And we want to know how much is passing this negative three line right here. Well, what's the point charge really doing in terms of an electric field? We know from our probably earlier studies an electric charge, electric point charge is going to have a field like this. It's going to radiate all around in every single point infinitely, right? So if we're asking the question, how much is going to pass this negative three line? Well, really, we're, we're asking how, how much of it is going to be coming through this x-axis because, or y-axis, excuse me. Because if it has any sort of component going downward, like this one, let's say this one, it's going to end up breaching this negative 3 axis. You see that? So as soon as you add some sort of vertical component in the downward direction of um, that point charge, it's going to eventually cross this negative 3 axis. So what you can say is, all right, since it's directly on this, um, since this is where it becomes horizontal, it's essentially half of all um, <coughs> half of all the um, charge because half of the charge is going to be going up in this direction, and half of it's going to be going down. And these these uh, going directly to this side would be pretty negligible. So you can basically you can basically sum this problem to. Um, D equals 12 nanocoulombs divided by 2 equals 6 nanocoulombs. All right. Um, how much electric flux leaves the surface of a 4, four meter radius centered at C equals 0? This is where things get a little tricky, guys. So basically the question is asking what would happen if we had a circle right here? And this circle's got a radius of 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out this circle down below to make it less busy. But I'm going to take out these two lines. And we're just going to use these two lines. And then we're going to multiply them by 2. Because that'll do the same thing in terms of how much charge is inside the sphere of this 4 meter radius circle. Okay? So... Come on, you stupid fuck. Okay. So again, I'm going to draw out the circle. Here it is. Bam. Now I'm going to put these two line charges here inside the circle. So we got a blue one. 
And we got a red one. Um, no. Come on. Get out of here. Okay, and now this one's 80. And this one's negative 50. And what you'll do is you'll times them by, you'll just times whatever value you get here. This is the, and you'll times by two and that'll give you your result. So first thing we need to figure out is how big this line is, right? So now we're doing some um, fairly simple geometry, I'd say. So the radius of this circle is four. So I will draw the radius like this. You see how that kind of makes a right triangle? Like that. So this is four, and we know that this blue line, for example, is one, uh, one meter above, directly above the center of the circle. So because of that, we can use right triangle trig to figure out the length of this section, right? So what you end up doing is, I would. Th this is the way I approached it at least. Um, we'll call this B squared, and we're looking for this blue line here. You know, you can think of this as, this is the blue line. Equals, four squared is 16, but we'll call it four squared for now. So now we know B squared equals 15, right? Because that's 16 minus one. B equals root 15. So now we know that um, blue line's length is equal to square root of 15 times 2 because we have, we just got this value, we need to multiply it by 2 to get the whole entire length. So 2 times root 15 is equal to, that is equal to 7.8. Okay? And this is in terms of meters. Um, similarly, we will get the, the length of the red line to be 6.92. And I'm not going to do that math, but you can see that it's going to result in a um, triangle that's 4, and this will be a 2, and you do the same math right there. Okay? So now we have both the lengths, now we just need to multiply it by the by the charge and I also forgot one little thing, very sorry I forgot that this, since this is a 4 meter radius, this is this is a little bit wrong since this is a 4 meter radius, it actually looked like this so you're gonna, you're gonna be enclosing this uh, 12 nanocoulomb so that 12 nanocoulomb charge is gonna be in there as well Okay, not a big deal, you just have to add that. So now we're ready for our Q total calculation. So the Q total calculation, you're just gonna go ahead and go, QT is equal to, and you just do, you know, um, these line charges are coulombs per meter. So once you multiply that by some length meter, you just get your coulombs, which is the unit we're looking for here, right? So now we end up with the final result of 12 nanocoulombs plus 2 7.8 um, meters times negative 50 nanocoulomb per meter. These are going to cancel. You're going to get nanocoulombs. Plus 2. And remember we're multiplying by 2 because we have two of these lines. We have two of each. times uh, 80 nanocoulombs oh, meter. Meters are going to cancel again. Okay, so now Q total is equal to 339 nanocoulombs. Hope that helps. Goodbye.